I knew when you were smiling, it wasn't a good sign. <laughs> he just might be peeing. He's always fucking peeing, isn't he, that boy? Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to What A Bunch Of Clowns Who Feel Genuinely Quite Sick To Their Stomach Like, Lecky, I don't feel well I, I don't either, yeah Welcome to the clown show <laughs> Welcome to the clown the show The tent is open, mm-hmm. how are you doing? I am filled with dread and didn't feel any better when I messaged Ovs and she sent me this voice note and for some reason there was this glitch <laughs> and it came back with this demon you, voice in slow-mo You were like, how are we strategizing today? Like, how are we gonna go about it? And I sent this really long thorough voice memo and it came back like a possessed demon we will share it in terms of how we're gonna handle stuff if it is a trailer or if it's a clip so i feel like the dark spirits are with us on this day (laughs) i don't know how it bodes yeah you what time is it there like it's 7 51 oh my god so it's obviously nearly three o'clock here and i tell you i've had the day off just as by happen chance yes horrible it's been horrible I've had like nothing to distract me. Yeah. I feel like we're about to sit a test that we haven't revised for. Does that make sense? Yeah. We were talking about this this morning and I, I said, I don't really like change. And I feel like I'm so mm. used to not getting anything that getting something is making me so anxious. It's so strange. I feel so stressed out. And I'm sure everyone else is really having a nice time. If listening to this gives you anxiety after the fact, I apologize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we wound very tightly at the minute, I have to say. So, Lecky, I've got a couple of questions for you. I think Beans is going to join us. Veg is at work. We're going to bring Veg in later and she's not allowed to look at anything. So we will get her in the moment reaction. Yeah. Lecky, just while we're waiting for my darling Beans, yeah. I've got my Colin mug. You're yeah. wearing yellow for pen. I'm wearing yellow for pen. We're yeah. all ready. Yeah. First of all, what do you think we're going to get? I'm going to go full clown. I think we're getting the trailer. Oh. It'll probably be, you know, a teaser trailer. Like a teaser trailer, trailer yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, we don't actually know that we're going to get anything. Let's say that it is a trailer. I'm talking really fast. So I'm really scared. I-, I was going to say, like, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm going to cry. Let's say it is a trailer. <laughs> so distracted. <laughs> uh. Let's say that we do get a trailer. I want one thing you'd really love to see and one thing you don't want. Someone on the sub asked this question earlier. I thought it was so interesting. One thing you do want to see, one thing you really don't want to see. Okay, this is coming from, I started an edit this week and I really want a pollen moment that's not super, super short so that I can have a nice little clip to put in there. <laughs> That makes sense, Lecky. For editorial purposes, yes. what would you not want to see? Okay, I don't think we're going to get this anyway, but I don't want to mm-hmm. see any of the part two drama between Pollen. So this could have like quite like a playful edge. I want to see yeah. if it is a trailer, like the playful side of it, and then we can have a dramatic trailer in May or June or whatever. Well, I think there will be some drama because usually like a yeah. teaser will set up like the premise. So they have like the falling out, which we saw. He offers to help her find her husband. They have the lessons and we realize the lessons aren't going to go to plan. But beyond that, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Lecky, one thing I'd die for in a trailer, a flashback of baby pollen. Oh my God, I wouldn't survive. Like a flash, do you know what I mean? Like yes. a split second. Yeah, I would be in a coma. One thing I don't want to see, I, at first I was like, I want to see anything. I was like, you could show me anything. Mm. And then I was like, oh, European sex montage. Oh, okay, yeah. But there is the comment on Reddit. Yeah, thank God to this Redditor who saved my sanity. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What did they say? They were like, no, 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 it won't be because Luke Newton would have said that he wouldn't be able to watch episode one with his mum. Yeah, and I was like, true, true. That is the kind of logic mm-hmm. that centers us desperately needed also nick we'll cover it in a future crumbs i'm sure but nick yesterday Mm -hmm. posting you'll never guess what i've just seen and then that good old emoji Mm -hmm. back from Mm -hmm. back from the dead like you've got two minutes i can't talk about the carriage right now (laughs) (laughs) okay maybe i should have grabbed my inhaler (laughs) for this morning oh like oh my god it's a trailer it's a woman in trailer (gasps) okay 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 it's a trailer oh my god oh my god oh my god okay 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 i'm watching Oh, it's not a trailer. <laughs> it's a clip. Oh, it's Cantonese. Oh, he's so in love. Sake. They're so happy. Oh, it's a clip. It's just. <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh my god! There. It's the ball. It's the Danbury ball. <laughs> my love, Ben. She's there. <laughs> so stressed for nothing. I took two days off. <laughs> I took two days off work for that. I um. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. <laughs> Like <laughs> you Hello. <laughs> what happened? Beans. It's the. <laughs> what happened? Just go to twittercom slash and, and then. Yeah. <laughs> There's a clip of Francesca. Yeah, yeah. Just watch that. <laughs> You haven't spoken in a really long time. <laughs> I, 
I'm just gonna let Beans watch. That's a pretty dance. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I can't compose myself. That's so funny. That's so funny. Do you think there will be something else? Like, were the other ones there was like more than nope. one thing? That was it. Oh, okay. <sighs> that was nothing, but it's fine. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> it's the Danbury Ball. It does seem to be that <laughs> the season's theme. Well, we're still eight weeks out from the show. They don't usually drop a trailer for until six weeks. Voice of Reason Beans. <gasps> oh, they kiss during their dance. That's super cute. I didn't notice that earlier. Oh, 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 oh. 19 seconds. Go have a look next to Cho. Is that Debling? <gasps> that is Debling. Yeah, no, it's Debling. I can't believe he's in episode one. I can't believe Debling's in this and Colin isn't. <laughs> <laughs> my husband just texted me and said, my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it is a little while later. We now have a vegetable on the line. Veg, how are you doing? Hello. Hello. Vegit. So you're going in completely blind. Yes. What I will say is we did get something. Okay. I'm not going to say if it's a trailer. I'm not going to say if it's a poster. I'm not going to say if it's a clip. I'm not going to say if it's behind the scenes. I'm not going to say anything. But we okay. did get something. We have something to show <laughs> you, Veg. Yeah. Okay, great. It's not been the best day of my life, so. It's not been the best day of your life. Well, let's see if we can bring something that's going to cheer you up, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Lecky has sent you a link. You're going <laughs> to click on the link. Oh, God. Right. And we'll be on hand. So we've seen it all. We've had a little chat. We're here to see you through this moment into the next phase of your life. Okay, great. The context is, Veg hasn't had a good day so far. What are you hoping for? Oh, I don't know. Your faces all look weird. I can't... I'm trying to judge your faces, right? Okay, just to give the listener. Lecky was smiling as soon as I got on the call, which makes me think it was something good. But Ops mm-hmm. is smiling, which makes me think it's something bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's funny for you okay me smiling makes you think it's something bad what do you want me to do <gasps> okay i can see a caption that says as one can see life after marriage has not dimmed the what? no 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 what i didn't say read it i said watch the clip i didn't say read oh, okay. did i i said watch <laughs> i'm watching but i should like my minute shush clip clip uh, clip okay <laughs> so it's gonna be just a cantony clip isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, they're very in love. I'm so happy for them. A nice dress, though. She looks gorgeous. Nice little dance. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> How pleasant for all involved. <gasps> Pen? <gasps> She's standing on the side of the ballroom. Oh, a kiss! Oh. <laughs> okay. Veg, I've taken off two days off of work. <laughs> <laughs> I knew when you were smiling, it wasn't a good sign. <laughs> oh, no. Because you would be miserable because we would have to do a lot of editing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. We were all in silence for a good five minutes. <laughs> oh, God. Great. So we did spy Debling in there, which is kind of exciting. Oh, great. We know this is a Danbury ball. So right. it's the same ball that Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton. Yes. If you look, it's actually a Four Seasons ball. <gasps> so if you look around the decor, we have autumn, we have summer, we have winter. Mm-hmm. So Four Seasons, which is very exciting. We haven't seen spring, oddly enough. Other people we saw in the background, we've seen some Fife. And Lord Squad fans, Lord Fife isn't the only Lord that we see in this clip. We also see standing next to him, none other than Joe Barnes, aka Lord Wilding. Welcome to the show, Lord Wilding. We hope you weren't making fun of Fran because that would not be cool we think we've seen debling we're not 100 sure but obviously seeing debling changes the trajectory of that element so that's something yep. to dig into Ooh. we saw lady stoll talking to genevieve chanel's character miss livingston okay nice we haven't been able to see lady danbury we haven't been able to see the sterlings and god there's someone else there's someone else we didn't see um oh, lucky who was it colin <laughs> Who? Colin. Who's that? <laughs> Your Mr. Bridgerton is not approaching. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, it's very nice. And then I saw Penn and I was like, oh, here we go. And then it cut to the end. <laughs> What's your initial reaction then? I like her dress better in this light, I will say that. Like, I like it a bit lighter. She's still got the gloves, but they don't look as dark. She has no more brooch. <laughs> if you look a little bit lower in the middle of her bust, oh. you can see what looks to be some sort of a ge- gemerald? Gemerald. Emerald. I was going to love that. Yeah. And her hair looks lovely. <gasps> hair down a ball, confirmed. Oh, we already kind of knew that, but double confirmed. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Bed, you've spoken about the dress and it is a very different palette to what we've certainly seen from her previously. It is. And certainly what she's moving towards. Do you think it makes a bit more sense now that we know that she's themed? So we think she's in summer theming, but like on the darker side of it. Maybe she's dressing as a single blade of grass. We know that he's into that. <laughs> <laughs> what a blade of grass. I don't know if she's dressing for summer, but she's on that side because Cressida is in winter, but she's wearing pink, which is a spring color. This looks like she's dressing for winter, right? I don't think they would have segregated them to the area they dressed as though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Penn went for winter. It's because you dress as summer, you don't have to stand in that corner for the whole night. <laughs> I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Go over there, spring. We don't want you here in autumn. <laughs> So first of all, the context, what we have is Francesca, who, Lecky, what do we think about Francesca? Who has she been talking to? The Lord Squad, and especially Lord mm. Fife. Lord Fife and his cronies, I should say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like walking away from them, and she looks kind of upset. So we don't know if she was speaking with them, or if she overheard them making comments about her. Mm-hmm. Beans, you had some thoughts about this, I think. Oh, well, they did highlight so much that this is a season of wallflowers, <laughs> and I think it's fairly obvious from the lack of Francesca, she certainly <laughs> There's that gorgeous shot of her under the mm-hmm. autumn tree where she yeah. sat very, very quietly. Mm-hmm. And looking away from the dance floor even. Like yeah. she's not even engaging with yeah. the, the dance. Because she's an introvert, right? Yeah. So my thoughts are that, like you said, she is an introvert and maybe it's less that they were shit talking yeah. her because she's a Bridgerton, you know. And there there haven't been any scandals thus far. People only should yeah. talk to yeah. Bridgertons when there's a scandal. I think she's maybe overwhelmed by all of it. You know, yeah. like she's out of her element and she just feels uncomfortable. Fife and his friends are amused by her shyness and how she's reacting to an encounter with them. It's kind of difficult for Fran because all the Bridgertons are known as a family as being quite like bold and outspoken. Even mm-hmm, even mm-hmm. someone like Eloise who traditionally hasn't been one for society, she doesn't like society, she's always still been very expressive and she's not been afraid to like be loud and to cause a scene and to storm off. Whereas you've got Francesca who, as we've heard from Hannah Dodd, she she is able to have that banter with the siblings one on one yeah but overall she is much quieter and she's much more internal Mm -hmm. that you can see she's struggling and you can see why Violet is going to be concerned about her this season because it's not even Mm -hmm. that she's uncomfortable but that she completely disengages from these social events like she literally turns her face away from them she's closing herself off so no one will approach her right so it's a really good segue Lecky because you have Francesca pulling away and she speaks to Anthony Mm -hmm. and Anthony can see that it hasn't gone well then Anthony sort of gets distracted by Kate which understandable she looks incredible I would be distracted by Kate too but the way that Anthony goes and speaks to Violet and Violet is immediately concerned by Francesca but Anthony sort of isn't really paying full attention to it he's kind of like she'll be fine she's she's just over there he's distracted because he's in love do you think that this is going to be a recurring theme that we're going to see through the season because Beans I think you said a few episodes ago that we might get an Anthony who is just so in love and so free of that like heavy heavy burden he was carrying around of duty above all else that he is going to take his eye off the ball and is that going to step into why Benedict is going to pick up some of the slack? Yeah. When Antony approaches Violet, Violet's concerned and wants to know if something's wrong with Fran and he says, she simply needs a moment and so do I with my lovely wife. He, like, he's mm. just completely oh. focused on Kate and being in love and the, this moment they're having as the newlyweds. A lack of Benedict, might I say. Yes. Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> no Eloise either. Maybe they show up together There's several Bridgerton siblings missing. Benedict, Eloise, Colin... They're all not there. Maybe a later arrival. That's a good point. Maybe they're all sharing a carriage. We'll get on to Colin and his other siblings in a minute. But yeah, Beans, so you've predicted this, that we were going to see something so different for Anthony where he was going to be like flying high with the angels and his wife. Do you think he's going to not take his eye off the Mm -hmm. ball in like a neglectful way, but do you think this could be played as like a comedic beat where people are able to, because he's been so, so hyper-focused before. He's always been very like critical, like watching everything they're doing. Right. Do you think they're going to be able to get away with things? Do you think it's going to be playful? Do you think this is going to make him not notice what's going on with maybe Fran and John, Colin and Penn. You know, I feel like Anthony's going to fall into a mama's thing. Like he's Mm going to be for the gossip and stuff like that. Because even in this clip, you can see that he's way more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Like Francesca is, you know, she's like, I need a moment. And normally, like if we're looking at his past seasons, if it was Daphne, he would like immediately be like, well, why do you need a moment? Blah, blah, blah. Like all this Mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's more like, yeah, just let her, let her do her 
her thing. Mom, just let her chill out and we'll come back to it. Changed man. Already, it seems like he's very much more calm than he has been. And, you know, not to criticize Anthony, because I think he knows his siblings and he probably knows that Fran needs a minute to herself. Obviously, they have a very beautiful dance. Lecky, take us through the theming of the ball and take us through the floor of the ball as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we think this is like a four seasons ball that kind of represents Mm -hmm. all of the seasons. We've remarked Mm -hmm. in a past Crumbs episode that the flowers on the exterior of the Danbury house looked very interesting because there was just like four different bouquets with different tones to them. And here we see that it's because they each represent a different season. So yeah, each side of the dance floor has a different season. And interestingly, the floor has a Grecian pattern on it. What's the song that's like Winter, spring, summer, or fall Oh, What's you gotta do All you gotta do is call Carol King And it's uh, You've got a friend That's it You've got a friend Interesting that we have a Four Seasons Ball in episode Mm -hmm. one and we have a Moon Phases Ball in episode two. That's Mm -hmm. a lot of transformation. Transitions, Mm -hmm. isn't it? Changing. Yeah, yeah. Which again, Beans, I think is something you've picked up on that is a theme that resonates with a lot of characters. From a pollen perspective, you can see the transformation of them growing Mm -hmm. up and changing. Mm -hmm. People like Violet entering a new period of her life. Kate whispers the word interference to Violet before leaving to dance with Antony. Very curious to figure out what this is a reference to, but we could perhaps infer that maybe Kate Mm -hmm. is encouraging Violet not to interfere with Fran, who is having a little wallflower moment, or perhaps just not to worry about Fran and enjoy herself. I wonder if they maybe have a conversation earlier in the episode where Kate, as the new Viscountess, tells Violet maybe that she doesn't have to worry about her children so much, or specifically in Fran case that she's sure Fran will do well in the season. So we have people shifting into new phases or taking on new identities as we're progressing through. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that was quite interesting that that's like a recurring element. Yeah, it'll be like a transformative season for the characters and Mm -hmm. you see that reflected even in the society events they're attending it seems. And being thrown into new environments and Mm -hmm. them having to sort of deal with it. Yeah, interesting. And then of course we have a very sad little pen, a little wallflower in the corner. Veg, how is she looking? Well, our poor, long-suffering Penelope might not be having a great night, but she does look lovely, of course, in a striking emerald green dress. And of course, this dress is familiar to us from the Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton clip from Valentine's Day, but we get a much clearer look at her outfit here, thanks to excellent lighting in the Danbury Ballroom. She knows how to put on a party. So Penn's dress has a deep emerald colouring with a soft, like almost golden shimmery overlay. Very nice. And her bodice is adorned with floral and leafed appliques, intricate beading, and very interestingly, a conspicuous emerald gem right in the centre of her bosom. Or I should say bodice. She is also wearing sheer elbow length black gloves, which have a delicate sparkle to them and are tragically accessorised with what we can only assume to be a very empty dance card. Can she not catch a damn break. Penn's beautiful red hair is tumbling in soft waves over her left shoulder. It looks so, so good. And intriguingly, an eagle-eyed Redditor spotted that this Penelope has a green hair piece holding back her hair on the right. However, we know from the Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton scene that Penn is not wearing a hair piece by the time she goes outside. Did someone pull it from her hair? Did she take it out in frustration after she fails spectacularly? Only I will tell, dear listeners, but it certainly does not bode well. Now, our thoughts on this are that Penn might tear off the clip in frustration, maybe as she is stalking out of the ball. It seems Mm. a bit unlikely that the clip would fall out, even if she trips or something when her dress is torn. Mm. And the idea of someone like Cressida perhaps deliberately tearing the clip out, though Penn's hair does look a bit must in the Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton scene. Doesn't seem like the sort of thing we'd see in the ton, mm-hmm. let alone at a, you know, a society function or a ball. We don't think there will be a cat fight necessarily because as we all know, Kitten, sorry, Pen, may be saving her claws for someone else. Sorry, just a little reference to one of my favourite book scenes. <laughs> her makeup is also very beautifully done with a heavier eye than we're used to in seasons past and blush cheeks. Hopefully that's not a blush caused by public humiliation, but who knows? Because it doesn't seems like it's not going to be a good night for Penn. The signs ain't looking good in this episode, but we do hope for the best for our wonderful Penelope. Finally, Penn's first ball outfit of the season is finished off with a heartbreakingly sad, 
expression. She's miserable and friendless and it makes us want to sob. Oh, Pen, we love you, gal. So, obviously, we have Pen looking very, very sad at the ball with no Colin in sight. Mm -hmm. What we think in the context, do we think she's tried to speak to people yet? Do we think it's gone bad? Do we think we've yet to have what fans have theorised to be sort of a a confrontation with Cressida where her dress gets torn, something like that? Do you think this is early run in the ball? I think this is a precursor to all that. I think this is a Penelope who showed up with her new glowed up look and wardrobe and Mm -hmm. hopes that men will just approach her because she looks different. But but we realise that it's not just about her appearance. It's, you know, about her confidence as they'll discuss later in that episode when Colin offers to mentor her in the ways of confidence. Yeah. So Penn has her glowed up dress, but if we look at her body language, we see her brushing her hands over the fabric of the bodice very unhappily and nervously. She doesn't seem comfortable, and she has once again found herself clinging to the walls of the ballroom, alone in a corner. Her expression here is particularly heartbreaking. We can really see how upset she is, and it's a very different expression to the beaming smile we've seen from Penelope's arrival back in the town, where she seemingly arrives back in London ready to put her plan in motion. And this is where she's trying to put her plan into action the best way she knows how, with her war wardrobe, but it's still not working because she still isn't able to leave the corner of the ballroom. What is especially upsetting here is the realization that Penelope is now truly alone. She no longer has Colin or Eloise by her side, and it must feel incredibly isolating for her, especially if she's actively trying to push forward in life, but finding it impossible. And no one's dancing with her, Mm -hmm. but again, she's clinging to the walls as well, which Mm -hmm. doesn't help. So she's very sad, although we did spot, and it is hard to see because it's very blurry in the background, it kind of looks like Debling is there. Yes, it does. Right, let's go on the theory then. No, let me see this. He's right next to Lord Cho. Oh, okay, yes, that is Debling. <laughs> He's blurry, bearded, and blonde. We think it's him. <laughs> He's. What did you say? He's... <laughs> blurry, bearded, and blonde. What a phrase. I thought you said flirty, like flirty and thriving. <laughs> a little blurry, little flirty. <laughs> okay, then, we have Debling sighting. One of the things we've theorised in the past when we've looked at sort of when Debling might come in and the sort of role he might play and <laughs> is we've wondered if he would sort of enter the season and in maybe episode two so he wouldn't right. see any of this yeah. this embarrassment he wouldn't see Penn struggling that what yeah. would happen is he would meet Penn when she had a bit more confidence to her and he'd immediately sort of go in see her and be like bam I'm here for it how do you feel about the idea that he might be in the very big first episode at the very first ball of the season and how do you feel about the fact that he might see Penn's fail spectacularly kind of nice if he's still like into her yeah that's what I was thinking I was really surprised by this because I thought he wasn't going to see her embarrass herself but Mm. then I was thinking if he did see her embarrass herself it says something about his character if he's still interested in her after witnessing Mm. something like that Mm -hmm, he doesn't mm -hmm. dismiss her even though she's basically the laughing stock of the town at this ball you know do you think this makes a little bit more sense then because I was thinking about it and I'm like actually it kind of works from what we've recently heard about Debling that (laughs) Debling is an outsider and he sees Penn and sees something special in her Mm -hmm. but if he's seeing her in her previous state of really really struggling on the side of the ballroom finding it very hard and not doing well do you think he's like oh she's definitely a a kindred spirit she also doesn't fit in Maybe Dublin just doesn't care what society thinks or isn't swayed by public opinion, unlike other men in the town. This could be a choice that the writers made to contrast with Colin's actions in 208 and with Penn's statement in the Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton scene where she perceives that he may be embarrassed by her and share the public's opinion about this. So for Dublin, it might not matter how the town sees Penelope, just what he sees in her. He's not just seeing this suddenly confident person who's more comfortable in her own skin and wardrobe. He's seeing someone who is struggling and he still sees that spark in her. Yeah. <laughs> Veg is twirling her hair. She's like, I'm kind of... <laughs> into it (laughs) do you think then that Penn and Debling have an interaction at this ball I think no or do you think maybe we see Debling spot Penn yeah and we see something on his face that's like I'm kind of into her or a bit like who's that hottie kind of yeah I think we'll see some sort of look where he notices her Mm. and I, I wonder if it'll be before or after that embarrassing moment It'll be interesting. Mm. Means. Yeah. I wonder if she's going to imp- approach somebody or whatever, or his group even, that he's with. Like, Penn is like, Lord Cho! Or, like, try to talk to them or something. And she finds it really embarrassing, but he finds it quite endearing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But she doesn't really talk to him directly. Yeah. Or she, like, makes a pun and nobody else laughs, mm. and then she's, like, embarrassed. Oh. But he laughs after he... Or he goes, oh, that's quite clever. And who is that, you know? Like, something like that. I was gonna say, like, yeah, I don't want him to appreciate her puns that's Colin's thing 
Uh, I know. I think I'm on the idea that we're going to see him see her, but she's not going to have the awareness yeah. that he's seen her. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But speaking of seeing people and not seeing people, we're definitely missing out on someone for a pollen podcast. Where's our Olin? Nowhere to be seen. We've got search yeah. parties out looking for him. While it's nice to see Cantony in love, I'm sure we're all hoping that our next glimpse of Bridgerton season three includes a snippet of our leading man again. Mm-hmm. I am so curious to see more of his swaggery side in action, as I'm sure many of you are. And I think I can say on behalf of everyone <laughs> that I'm even more grateful now for this surprise appearance of loved up Pollen. Poor Pen here is miserable. Colin is nowhere to be seen, but at least we can sleep easy tonight knowing they are together and in love next to that biscuit tin in Italy. <laughs> it's not just Colin who's missing. We're missing two other siblings. We're missing half the fucking alphabet here. Yeah. Where is B, C, and E? So do you think they're arriving together and they just haven't got there yet? Yeah, I think they're maybe just traveling yep. separately, rocking up a little fashionably late. How about the idea that this is quite early on in the ball? Oh, maybe, you know, the ball's, the ball's balling. We've seen Pen by herself. Do you yeah. think this is going to be Colin's like entry moment back into the ton where it's going to be like a character moment for him where he rocks up with Elle and Ben yeah and Mm -hmm. he enters the scene and that's like leading man strings cover starts to play yeah strings cover of I bet you look good on the dance floor starts kicking in I was just an aside it would be really hilarious if this was the scene where they played the prank and played Cougar Town like it's Colin Bridgerton with his swagger re-entering the the ton and it all of a sudden it's Cougar Town that starts playing instead of whatever song that we're supposed to play if you guys don't know what cougar town is um we'll link it in our show notes and that's all we'll that's the only context you need <laughs> we've heard in the synopsis that he's got a new look people are gonna pay more attention to him and it's his moment of stepping out the shallows because you know if we assume that the ball is taking place the same day as the debut he arrives back on the day of the debut you think he's yeah. gone to get a shower freshened yeah. up he's entering and yeah. he looks different he's acting different and do you think this is the moment he's going to enter where poor pen is in the corner shrinking away to herself and there's gonna be this big moment where he enters everyone notices and pen notices and that's when he comes into the scene you also had an interesting idea that because we're not sure if we see like the spring part of the ball yeah. if there's just another section they hadn't filmed yet and we kind of see that yeah. section when when he enters and he's spring mm-hmm. he's in spring which would be very sweet mm-hmm. I do think he's on his way and then I think what would happen is he'd enter maybe he'd try and speak to Pam maybe she'd give him a cold shoulder and then we have the whole disaster of everything with Cressida and her yeah. storming out all of that so he is on his way fear not I know we haven't seen him today I can draw a little cartoon of him for you if you want <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Cressida, Lucky. Interestingly, first of all, Penn is, seems to be on the side of the the summer side of the ball. Mm-hmm. And Cressida is on the opposite side. If you see Cantony dancing, kind of framed between the two of them. And Cressida yeah. looks to be over in the winter side of the ball. Setting the pause opposing instantly. And she's wearing this very, like flouncy pink gown. Mm. It's giving Jennifer Connolly and Labyrinth vibes to me. Someone pointed out to us it also a bit of Wicked vibes. Pen is very alpha coded. I've said mm-hmm. it before. Say it again. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that they're going to end up best friends. <laughs> yeah. Before we go, you said we think we spotted Lady Stoll and Miss Livingston. They look styled very similarly to how they were at the wedding, the pollen wedding. Oh. So that seems to be the clip, guys. <laughs> I think we got enough out of it or as much as we could have. <laughs> out of this clip that has that has no pollen <laughs> so to contextualize what's coming up we're currently in the middle of an official rewatch now if you remember clowns last year we had a season one rewatch that was held by the official social media and what did we get at the end of the rewatch in december bloopers so who knows if something is coming on monday maybe a trailer maybe we will get the cougar town blooper from season three maybe the season two bloopers will finally make their way home to us we will get a trailer in the coming weeks won't we in the meantime a little sign note from us mm-hmm. should we do our little announcement now i was gonna say this is the perfect time to do it so we don't forget because <laughs> this is going out right away yeah. okay guys um we have promised our book reread for ever since we started the podcast <laughs> yeah and we're so excited to say now that we've actually recorded some of the episodes mm-hmm. that we are going to be releasing our book reread we're gonna reread romancing mr bridgerton but lucky we're doing it with a little bit of a twist how are we gonna do it we're making it a little read along with romancing mr bridgerton we're going to be releasing episodes on some significant dates mentioned in the book so you can kind of read along with Pollen's love story as it unfolds. Obviously 2024 marks 200 years since the book timeline. Mm-hmm. Colin returning home in April of 1824. So yeah, like Lucky says, we're going to make a little graphic for you so you can see when we'll be reading what chapters and what dates and such. But we thought what better way to celebrate than with a little read along. So we're hard at work making that for you yeah. and we'll have that coming to you in April which is really exciting because we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it. Um, <laughs> but we're having a great time 
Um, there's, you know what, guys? There's loads to look forward to. Not every day can be a cornucopia of pollen. Yep. But one day there will be. Filled to the brim. And we will be here through it all. We've now celebrated pollen. Now we're into spring officially, spring equinox. We have had this podcast in every season of the year, just like the Four Seasons Ball. Ah, Four Seasons Ball, Four Seasons Podcast. How exciting. Beans, it was your birthday. So she's a birthday bean. We've been very <laughs> excited to celebrate our lovely bean this week Woo-hoo. and we will see you soon but until we do lecky any last thoughts no no we're speechless we're speechless guys <laughs> <laughs> i mean the, the kiss is cute great dave cantony um you know what actually i will say that kiss is adorable i would love to see a pollen kiss on the dance floor and now we know that the yeah. a loving couple could get away with it clowns once again we've slightly slightly overhyped ourselves we have <laughs> no one to blame but us almost gave myself an anxiety attack but i fully announced this week as the coming week on instagram stories <laughs> not quite the coming week nobody's coming yet we've been through a lot at the four seasons ball so we march on we'll be here clowning away and where can everyone find us as we do that lek you can find us at Wedabarb pod on instagram and tiktok and just listen you know catch us somewhere if you want you're right there <laughs> she's Sorry. recovering i'm mentally drained okay yeah we're on youtube we're on the podcast platforms on youtube there's collages knock yourselves out <laughs> beans sing us out winter spring summer fall all netflix has to do is call and we'll be there yes we will we'll be a clown hong kong <laughs>